Cominciamo i controlli. Tettuccio, chiuso e bloccato, spina tolta, maniglia in sede, comandi liberi. Freni su flap dei cop, trim per il decollo, freno parcheggio tolto, JPT su off, selettore su tip, anti speed su off. Orizzonti e giro bussola, 059 in prua, 059 la display, bianchi e colorati in sede, passare 7, 60, pito. Viga la pony 01, pronto decollo. A dove vai? Dear all, Jean Dobre, good morning to everybody. Once again, I feel very lucky to be here, and I think you should consider a lucky person to, add, to have had this, the opportunity to attend to this amazing program. Uh, this is where we left at the end of my session, and I will take this opportunity to highlight once again how corporate culture can enable or not a company to adapt to changes, to be able to adapt to changes or to be an innovative company. Innovation, to me, is in people's mind and in team capability to cooperate. So corporate culture, company culture, is a competitive advantage. Of course, let me tell you once again, you already know who I am. I want to just highlight a couple of things about my career. You know, I've been a fighter pilot. And then I've been flying with the aerobatic, the Italian aerobatic team, the Freccia Tricolori. I've already told you a lot of things about that. I want to just add one thing. It was a military squadron, of course, but we were anyway working every day on innovation. For the Freccia, for example, innovation means that you need to be able to keep that flight, that very dangerous activity, safer every day on a daily basis. So this, to me, means that innovation is a wide, it's a 360 approach on everything. It's not only about you know, creating a new app or inventing something. It's also about improving performances or reducing risks or find any way in your company to, better perf to, better, to achieve better results. Okay, this is a very important concept. Another aspect in that team, for example, has been that the fact that we could create new maneuvers, and that's innovation in that field. Of course, it's very difficult, but it follows the same path. You will have to follow in your company, for example, to find out something new that could be, uh, that could be competitive in the market. Okay, then I went to Ferrari. Of course, Ferrari, you know Ferrari. Ferrari is about tech fast speed, Formula One, you know, so of course it is also a technology company where innovation could also mean that you find uh, um, uh, new technologies, new engines, uh, in order to be uh, a lot more competitive in the market. But it's not only about that. It's also about uh, creating new structure, uh, create a better organizational chart for your company, uh, more proactive, more competitive. Okay, to take a bet best decision, a better decision-making process, for example, okay? And then, of course, my last part, I have my company, but I have something to add, which is very important and actually related to innovation. I just became the capstone project director of Triumph Global Executive MBA, which is one of the uh, highest rank uh, executive MBA in the world. And this capstone project is just about the fact that all the participants must get in team and find out you know, a startup idea, a new idea, develop the business plan in order to pitch at the end of the program uh, in front of a jury, which is the equivalent of a venture capital. 
So it's something that it's becoming a lot more important in my life, and it's became a lot more important in, in these few months. So I'm very happy to share with you uh, these concepts today in this webinar. As I told you, corporate culture to me is a competitive advantage because, of course, you need competencies to be uh, a great team you know, and to achieve great results. But this is not enough. High-performance teams are high-performance teams because of their capability to interact and cooperate. Because I've never heard a company looking, or an, or an adunter looking for a stupid, not experienced engineer. We are all looking for the best professionals. But then the difference is made by the fact that we connect people and these people are able to launch ideas. They feel free to launch ideas and to challenge each other in order to take the best decision or to find out something new that can keep the company a lot more competitive in the market once again. And so I want to go through, you already, be, you already uh, listened to me, and these are concepts I've already told you many times, but I want to keep this, this, last, this very last opportunity to highlight these concepts, because to me these are the foundations of and high performance team that in this specific case means also the capability to face disruption, adapt to changes, or even be the number one, the innovative guy. Okay? If you forget these, everything else could be a lot more difficult. Then, of course, this is not enough. You will need to have processes, you will need to have a good organization, you will need to have resources, but that's another thing. Okay? This is something that you need to put together. But these are the foundations. So please remember that if you sit at the table to take a decision, uh, this decision will be the best if you respect each other, so it's about values. Respect each other, be humble, be loyal and frank. So state your opinion in a respectful way, but respect also people stating different ideas from you. There will be a boss taking a decision, okay? Remember to be open-minded. This is a very big problem, you know, in companies and actually not only in companies. Uh, we create our own world and the world is done by, you know, our culture, our uh, school, our experiences in, in uh, professional life, uh, the friends we meet at the bar. So we create our own world, but the world can be very, very different, trust me. So we need to be open-minded if that one day we have a genius in our company coming in and launching a crazy idea. It may seem a, a crazy idea. Maybe not. Maybe it's a very good, innovative, new idea. That's why it sounds strange to you. Then please remember that we need to be free and ready to challenge and to be challenged. That also means that the boss must create an environment where people feel free to tell boss, you're always right, I really like you, but sometimes, this time, in this specific time, because of this and this and that, uh, maybe this is not the right decision. I will do whatever you want, but please, first, let me state my idea and my opinion on this point. I, it may help the decision-making process. This is very important. We need to create an environment where people feel free to say, think first and then say the unthinkable. This is the value that creates real innovation, you know, because we are all capable to say something that already, that's already there. Okay? So, but if, you, if, the leaderships, if the leadership style, for example, in the company is terror, trust me, if you have a genius there, it will never talk. Then it will go somewhere else where this environment is there, and it will state his crazy idea to his boss. Last but not least, innovation comes out of companies and teams where people is proactive. It does not, you know, it is not just there standing still. Also because today the bigger risk you can take is not taking any risk. So you need to be proactive. Of course you may tell me, and we're already discussing about that, Massimo, you know, it's not that easy in my company to, you know, you know stick to values, be coherent and be proactive. So let's say, boss, 
given that I will do whatever you want, please let me explain my idea on this point. It may help you in your decision-making process. So stick to these rules and you will sooner or later succeed. It will not may pay in a very short term, but it will pay in the long term for sure. And that means sustainability, because this is what we have to talk about in this webinar and this, in this full program. Remember that diversity is a competitive advantage. I have this golden rule. I've already shared this idea with you. You know, different people can look at the same problem from different point of view. So that can state and extrapolate from that problem every single element that the boss needs to take into consideration to take the best decision. This is a concept applied in innovation. I remember in January I was in Google and uh, we went there not on a visit but to perform and to do a project with them and they have this system where to solve, you know, they use diversity to solve problems or to innovate, to create something new. Because, uh, for example, if they had to solve an HR, a human resources problem, where they are stuck, they can't move, they can't find a solution, they create teams with diversity. I mean, talking about competencies in this time. So there will be one HR person leading the team, and then there will be one marketing guy one purchasing guy, one R&D guy. This will give the out-of-the-box idea, which is the idea of people that it's clean, you know, it doesn't know a lot more th about the topic, but it has the possibility to be fresh and new on his own idea. And that can help the process to take a decision. And I'm gonna give you a very nice example of that. This is a Ferrari Formula One pit stop, you know, when they, these guys changes the tires. Uh, I was in the team at that time, and actually when they called me from the Frecce to join Ferrari, the idea of Ferrari was that, you know, to bring someone which is not completely aware and with, these, with deep vertical competencies in the world, but that just big competencies on managing a complex organization, and to get his opinion on many topics. So that was the pit stop where these guys used, and they made a record in those years using a different color of gloves. The problem was that at that time, the car release were not automatic, and we had, you had a guy standing still looking at the box track and the car uh, with a button in his hand and a red light, you know? So he was releasing the car when the track was free and he was able to see four hands above the tires. At that point, he was about to release a button. Release a button to get the green light for the pilot. Release because we are faster to release than to press. The problem was that those hands were hands in red gloves, on red car, on red suit. So it was not that easy for these guys to get this information very quickly and they're very pressed, you know, the pressure is very high there. So we decided and I launched the idea to do these gloves uh, yellow, Ferrari yellow, of course, you know, Modena, yellow Modena Ferrari, which is one of the three color of Ferrari, yellow, black and red. And that was an idea, they really appreciated that and actually it worked. Of course, it was not only that, but that was a piece of that improvement that made this thing innovative and, and allowed the team, enabled the team to be faster in that specific part of the race, which is one of the most important because it's where, where you can make the difference in a race. Let's talk for a while about innovation by failure. That could mean many, many things. It could mean that for example, it happened many times that you were working on an idea, that idea didn't work, and then you actually discovered that what came out was a good idea. Post-it, for example, you know, the one we used, that yellow 
thing that we use to take notes, and many, many others. Innovation by failure could also mean that it is very important, a concept that I've already stated about the permission to fail, I will talk about in a few minutes. And one last thing, unfortunately, it also means that it's very, very difficult to be innovative, to be the number one, launching something successful. And so uh, many, many times, unfortunately, you will not succeed, but you will still have to try because otherwise you will never get to the point. So I want to state first, considering that the innovation process, this is why the innovation process is very, very difficult. Could be crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. It's just like this. This is uh, the crazy flight. So it's a maneuver from the French. Eh? It's called crazy. And actually, it's just like an innovation process. You know where you start. You don't know exactly where you're going. Or at least your dream is there, but it's not easy to get there. But please remember that when you have an idea, these are some mistakes you don't want to do, because these will not enable you to get to the point. First of all, when you have an idea, you don't have to do that for yourself. It's not something that you are going to do it because you like it. Because this doesn't mean that other people in the market will like that idea. And this, this also means that you will be working, looking at your own, without and making any consideration about the fact that the feasibility of this project in a market or in the company. Because, of course, here we're talking about company innovation. If you have an idea in your company to improve something, uh, to you know, get something working better, uh, it's not your own thing. You're not doing that for you. You're doing that in you. Are, you must be willing to do that for your company, for your team and for your company, for your wealth of your company. Another thing that will not enable you to succeed will be the fact you don't have the right team. So the team is not the one you want for that doesn't have diversity, doesn't work well, it doesn't cooperate. It doesn't, is not able to apply those best software environment rules I stated at the very beginning. They don't respect, they don't, have, they don't trust each other. And let, let's make a, a small point on this. Please remember, respect is very important. But respect, I do not respect the person because he dresses like me. I respect the person because, the way, because of the way he's able to behave. For example, to state a different idea respectful, to listen to a different idea respectfully. This is respect. Respect means that I know that my freedom ends here because there starts yours. Trust, once again, another big word. Trust is very, very important. But once again, trust is not about the way we dress, the soccer team we support, that we like the same kind of pizza or the same kind of movie. Uh, most of all, trust is not about the fact that we agree on everything. Please, if you have a friend that always tells you that you're right, ask yourself a question. In business, we need to be able to share ideas, different ideas, to challenge ourselves, because we have a common goal, which is not mine, it is the company goal. We need to share that objective and work for that together respectfully and gaining trust with each other. Then, of course, <laughs> this is a, a very analytic point. Many companies developed very good idea, and then they were not able to succeed because of cash flow. They didn't have enough money today, even if the idea could have been very good on the market. So don't be too attached to the idea and to the fact that it will be successful. Of course, it will be successful, but you need to be able to sustain the structure today and tomorrow, 
not in two years, because otherwise you, you may have some trouble. And there's, some, there's many, many cases in the business world. Last thing you have to pay attention is that sometimes it happened that good idea came too early in the world and they didn't work. Or the market doesn't have any need, doesn't express any need about that problem, which is related once again to the fact that you're doing this thing, this idea, developing this idea uh, just because of you, because you're doing that for yourself. This is very important. Remember that permission to fail is fundamental to allow a team to develop a new idea. Because one thing is to have the idea, and it's a great idea, then you have to develop that. We already said that it may go a different way. But if the, your genius and your team, the, the innovation team is, uh, or the one that they have an idea on that you know, specific topic in the company, they, if they are scared, about the co corporate culture, it's all about that, they will not work, they will stay safe. Let's say, you know, the racist regulation states that the front wing of the car must be one meter, uh, and you are scared about that, uh, and you are an engineer, you will stay safe, and that wing will be 99 centimeters, but then you will not win. In the other thing, where, where people feel free to think and say the unthinkable, Feel free to challenge each other. Feel free to launch ideas, crazy ideas too. They will push on innovation, but they need to fail. They have a permission to fail that I always call, you know, a risk manager permission to fail. That means you're not throwing money out of the window, of course. And there we go. This is an example of everything I've been saying till now. Uh, about developing something in a company, still considering that innovation could be everything. In the fridge, it could have been, I told you, could have been, you know, uh, keep and managing this, in order, managing, being, being able to, to manage this flight in a safer way on a daily basis. But it could have also been create a new maneuver. And I have been one lucky guy, because when I was the formation leader in the Fletcher in 2006, uh, that was my third season as a formation leader at the Fletcher. So I was you know, very experienced. Uh, I had time to think. And that was the moment where I decided, why don't we create a new man maneuver in the Fletcher? Uh, of course, everything I told you till now was true. So uh, my boss was an open-minded guy. We were all respectful. We were all, uh, we, we, we were all trusting each other in the team. And we were all free to launch ideas. So to think and say the unthinkable. The approach in every meeting was that we were stating the ideas and the boss would have said, Massimo, thanks, I'm gonna do something different, but thanks for your thoughts for your contribution. Those information will help me to take a, best, a better decision. I still remember that my biggest concern when I was taking a decision, and you know, because from one of my decisions, one of my decisions could have led to a tragedy. My problem was only when nobody raised his hand to say, boss, maybe you're not right today because those were very useful information to me to get to the point. So one day, because of this, this environment, I've already told you many times, allowed me to start thinking to a new maneuver, a new idea. It's very difficult, trust me, for, for the Fletcher to add a new maneuver for many reasons. One was that the program is already tight, so the fuel consumption and the autonomy of the jet was there. So you couldn't add, simply add a maneuver. You had just to cut one of those existing maneuver at that time, and then, perfectly insert a new maneuver. And the process to get there was very long. So I choose one maneuver that could have been the one to, to be removed, the, maybe the most simple one, the less spectacular one, um, which was called Aquila. Uh, that means uh, eagle. And uh, I tried, I started to, you know, design things. Very, you know, whatever thing was coming out of my mind. Also crazy things. Then I went to my boss. 
I knock the door, I enter this office. Boss, I have an idea. Uh, may I launch this stupid idea? And uh, so I said, okay, I've been working during these months at a new maneuver. But actually, right now, I only have some drafts, some sketch on, on the paper. Um, so I need your permission to take a jet, go in the air, fly, and try one of these. And in order to understand which one of these, you know, could work in the air, because you, you have to know that it's a lot different. You know, you design something, it doesn't mean that it will work, and it doesn't mean the jet will be able to fly that maneuver the way you depicted it, you designed it. Thanks to that environment, he said, yes, Massimo, I think it's a crazy idea, but I like the goal. I like the way we are always thinking in improving ourselves. This is very important, it's an approach, it's a state of mind. We always have to work together for our company to achieve better goals, to be a lot more sustainable, and to win in the market. And so this was an example of a crazy guy raising his hands, thinking and then saying the unthinkable, with a boss capable to apply all those rules, respectful, listening, a different idea, and giving to me that specific permission to fail I told you about. So I started to fly, I went to fly, I tried several maneuvers, uh, many of those were not even spectacular, they were not very interesting for us. Uh, finally, I find out something that could have worked. So I said, I landed and said, boss, this could be an idea. Well, now I need to go to fly with two jets because I need to design something in the sky. And don't forget that this also means that we were spending money. So we were investing money in something we were not sure that could have worked. And this happens in companies too. If you want to innovate, if you want to improve, unfortunately, you need to be able to invest some money. That's why this is a very important co concept to me. It's a lot better and easier for a company to invest, to approach improvement and you know new ideas when you're uh, in a very good shape with very good results. Because first of all, you're happy because you're doing good. Second, you have money. Completely different is to approach improvement and be willing to improve when you're not doing good and because you're not happy and you don't have money to invest. But anyway, he sent me to fly, we flew, we started to design this thing that actually uh, was nothing at the very beginning. Till that day where he discovered, watching to us in the sky, that we were about to design a big heart in the sky. That was beautiful, but we were working in the wrong way. So we had to switch the position of two aircrafts in order to be able to close the big heart in the sky, because the way we were doing that was wrong. So this is an example where we got to that point by failure. We were doing a wrong thing, but the diversity and a different point of view looked in, staring at us, get, got that point, catched the right point. Guys, if you invert the, the path of the jets, you will be able to design a beautiful heart. Right now, this is one of the most famous and most uh, uh, important maneuver of the Frecce. It's very difficult because it has uh, a separation, three crosses of the formation, and then a rejoin, which is very, very difficult for an aerobatic team. And that is the maneuver. I'm very proud of that because it's, as I told you, one of the most important maneuvers. Last but not least, this is the very, the most important word in everything. Remember humility. Humility is the foundation of everything. But humility is not the opposite of being competitive. Humility is not the opposite of being ambitious. And it's also a different thing from being modest. Yeah. Humility just means that I'm open, that I'm open-minded, that I know my strengths, 
but I also know my weaknesses, that I know my competencies, but I also know that I don't know anything, that I don't know everything, and I need people to work with me to achieve the results. Team is the key word, and humble, being humble and humility are the key words for a successful team. Everything I said works if everyone in the team is humble. So this is it. it. It has been a great honor for me to be part of this first edition of this, of this amazing program. I feel lucky, as I feel you should feel lucky, being, being part of such an amazing program. And you've been the first one. You will, be, you will be remembered for that. I wish you all the best, and feel free to contact me anytime. I will answer your question. Thank you very much. Big hugs. <laughs>